Hey, this is Lewis from Breakdance, and today I am proud to announce the release of Breakdance Beta number two. I know we promised an element development API, but we're going to do even better. Today, we are announcing the release of Element Studio, the IDE for visual element development. This is the same tool that we've used internally to build all of the elements for Breakdance. And we are now opening it up to you to build elements yourselves. So you can get to Element Studio from the dot 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 menu, and then you click Element Studio. And here we are inside Element Studio. Let me quickly show you how it works. So I'm going to make a new element. I'm going to call this element Basic Pricing Table, and I'll create the element. And right now I'm in split screen view, but I can just click this to change the view. I'm going to use this view for uh, demonstration purposes to start things off. Let's go ahead and add the basic pricing table element to our page so we can watch it take shape live. So I'm going to delete this section. I'm going to go to add and I'm going to find basic pricing table and I'm just going to drag it onto the page. And we haven't done anything yet with this element, so it's obviously totally blank. Let's add some content control. So you'll do that in the content tab with the pencil icon. I'm going to add a control section and in that control section, I'm going to add some controls. The first control I'm going to add is going to be for the price. So I'm going to add a control called price. This is going to be a text field. And now you can see we have a control called price, which is a text field over on the left. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to call this section content. If you have multiple sections, then you'll see that multiple sections actually appear. If there's only one section, the UI just hides the actual section label. So that's why you're not seeing the section label here. You're just seeing the fields. But okay, we have a field called price. Now let's go ahead and display that in the elements HTML. Right now it just says blank element. So we're going to go over here and we're going to click the code, the two bracket icon. And we're going to copy the code for this field. And then we're going to go to the HTML tab over here. And we're going to paste in the code. And now whatever we specify for the price is going to appear in the elements HTML. Let's go ahead and change the zoom behavior so we can see this in full size because I only have a 13 inch screen on my MacBook. So I'm gonna to go to preferences, um, scale content to fit the screen. I normally like that on, but when I'm building elements, I usually turn it off so I can see better. So there we go. Whatever we put in the price field is going to show up right there. Let's go ahead and wrap this with an H3 tag. And now we have an H3 for our price. Let's go ahead and go back to the content section. Let's add another field called features. And this is going to be a, whoops, this is going to be a repeater. And inside there's going to be um, a feature text field. Now we can add features. Um, feature number one, feature number two, and feature number three. Now let's go ahead and display this in the elements HTML. So we will copy the code help again. Uh, we'll open this code thing. This is called the code help. We'll copy that. We'll go to the HTML and we'll paste this in. We want this to be a uh, UL. So I'm going to put a UL tag in and then close the UL tag. And for each item, I'm going to put an LI tag. And let's change repeated to the actual um, feature text. So let's go back here and go to feature and we're just going to copy item.feature and we're going to put that right here in our HTML and now we have our repeated list of features. Now let's go ahead and set up some design controls for the element. So we're going to do that in the design tab right here and let's add a control section called price and another one called features. And now you'll see the design section for this element actually appears. We have price and features. Let's go ahead and add uh, typography controls to the price section. So I'm going to add a preset. Um, there are a number of presets here. I'm going to choose the typography preset, which is actually just chosen by default. And now we have our typography controls. Um, now let's go ahead and make it so whatever we set here outputs the necessary CSS to make uh, to, to make the typography appear the way we want. So we're going to copy this and then we're going to go into this dynamic CSS tab. There's default CSS and the dynamically generated CSS. The dynamic CSS is generated 
um, for each instance of the element based on the properties you set in the element. So we're going to do selector and then uh, we put our price in an H2, I think, or maybe it was an H3. Let's check the HTML. It was an H3. I'm going to give this a class called um, Basic Pricing Table BPT Price. You can use whatever prefixes you want. I recommend not making them conflict with other element developers, element packs. So do something unique. Prefix it with your brand name like we do. But for this demo, I'm just going to call it BPT Price. And BPT Price is going to be in the CSS. And then I'll paste in... The, the code I copied from um, from right here. That's what I pasted in right here. And let's go ahead now and adjust our typography controls. And as you can see, we can now style the typography. Um, let's add another control section called wrapper. And in wrapper, I'm going to add in a background control, uh, sorry, a color control. This is going to be for the background. And I want this control to support um, solid and gradient. So I, I open up the control settings and I choose solid and gradient. There are a number of options like enabling media queries, etc. Um, you'll figure it out if you're a developer. Anyway, let's go ahead and copy the code for setting the background color. And let's put this in the elements wrapper in the CSS. So that's just going to be selector background color and there we go now we have background color or I could do background gradient um, okay let's set up some default CSS for the element because right now we have this h3 with BPT price on it but we don't want all the spacing on that h3 and that's browsers do that by default for heading tags we don't want that so we're going to go into the default CSS and we're going to say whoops didn't mean to copy that we're going to copy this and we're going to go pt price um, margin is zero and that'll clear out the default margin on that price we could do the same thing for the uh, ul2 i'm not going to do it in this video but you get the idea you should prefix all the default css you put in here with the elements class name so i'm going to click this to copy that and then i'm going to paste that in like this and note that it's also prefixed with dot breakdance uh, which is necessary for specificity in some cases. Um, let's go ahead and also set up some other default styles for this element. So let's just copy that, get rid of BPT price. We're going to say by default this element has a background color of light gray and padding of 40 pixels and text align of center. And as you can see, that's now the default CSS for the element. Now we probably want to give the user a control to change that. We already gave them a control for background color. Um, let's give them a control for padding as well. So we'll go into the design controls, go into wrapper, and we will add a control, which is a unit input, and we will call this padding. Let's copy that. Um, it doesn't know unit is always padding, so it gave us uh, font size as the property in the code help, but we'll just change that to padding in our code, and now we can set our padding to whatever we want. Let's go ahead and enable a little range slider for the padding. So we'll go back to the design controls, open up the options, and uh, let's say the range is step of one, minimum padding of zero, max of 200. And now we can use the range slider to set the padding. Um, anyway, you get the idea. That's how to build elements. Let's go ahead and wrap this very ugly and basic pricing table up with a button. So let's go ahead and add a preset section called Adam V1 button content and uh, we're going to name this button and now we can set up our button text we'll say click me and the link URL is going to go to breakdance.com now let's actually make this button output in the HTML so we're going to copy the code help go over to the HTML we want the button at the bottom we'll paste this in and as you can see we have a lot of examples depending on how you want the button to to appear we want it to be a primary button so I'm just going to get rid of all this and use the primary button code help and now we have our click me button now let's go ahead and set up the styling controls for the button so we're going to want to give the button a class so it can be whoops didn't mean to do that we're going to want to give the button a class so it can be styled so I'm going to call this uh, BPT um, button 
and uh, we're going to use that in our CSS momentarily. Now let's go to the design controls and add a preset for Atom V1 button design. And uh, let's get the code help for this. This is the CSS. Um, so let's paste this into our CSS. Note we're giving it the path to the button control, design.button. Then the class that's going to be on the button, I think we called it BPT button. Um, and then the root selector, which is just selector in this case, and breakpoint, which always needs to be present. And uh, then we will go into the HTML and give it the path to the button design preset section, which is going to be at design.button. Design.button. And there we go. Now we can style the button. We make a secondary button, a primary button, a custom button. Of course, this will respect the global styles that the user has set up for buttons. So you can make your buttons and your elements look like the globally styled buttons. Isn't that nice? All right, let's close the global styles here. I don't want to save those changes. And now we have, that's it. That's creating an element with Element Studio in Breakdance. Let's go ahead and save that element, and that's going to save it to the Elements plugin that I installed before I started recording this video. But if you click, if you actually want to use Element Studio, you, uh, you can click this link, and it's going to tell you how to actually get set up so you can save these elements, commit them to GitHub, um, et cetera, et cetera, and distribute these all in a plugin that you give away for free or sell to end users of your element add-on pack. Um, as far as documentation goes, we have very little documentation for Element Studio, but we have tons of example elements. You can open up every single one of Breakdance's elements in Element Studio and see how it's done. So if you want to see how an advanced element, like the advanced tabs, is built, here, let me uh, let me close that for a sec. If you, I mean, this is obviously done with JavaScript, and it's got to work in the builder. It's got to, the JavaScript's got to keep working when you move the tab content around or you duplicate a section, it's got to recreate all the event listeners, etc. If you want to see how that's done, just open up Element Studio and open up the Advanced Tabs element. You obviously can't save it because that would uh, overwrite it. You could save a copy of it in your own plugin, and then you can look at, see how everything's done. You can see how the code is done, the HTML, the CSS. You can see how we set it up so that when you first add it to the page, it has those default children present, right? Like when you first add it, it already has all these sub-elements inside of it. Um, you can see how we set up dynamic property paths, how we set up the draggable spacing. So when you click the element, you can drag to add margin and padding to it. Um, you can see how we set up all the JavaScript, where that JavaScript is coming from, um, what we do to inline to make it actually you know, run the code that mounts the tabs on the front end what actually happens, how we pass in data from the properties panel into the JavaScript, um, how we handle the builder behavior. So when the user updates a property in Breakdance, what code actually runs to update that on the Breakdance tabs, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can see how we do server-side rendered elements. For example, if you want to open the WooCommerce uh, product builder, for example, you can see how that works, and if you actually open up the element code, you'll see a PHP file on the server that's executed. There's all sorts of advanced stuff in here. If you want to know how to do anything, just look at one of our existing elements where we've already done that, and just open it up in Element Studio, and you can see how it's all done. Header Builder, you can open in Element Studio. Um, comment form, you can open in Element Studio. Everything pretty much can be opened in Element Studio, and that should give you all the examples you need to build any type of element. All right, this is Lewis from Breakdance, and I am excited to see what you create. Thank you very much for watching.